past three days, France has been blockaded. French dairy farmers blocking access to, for instance, one of France's iconic tourist sites, the Mont Saint-Michel Monastery in Normandy, the region that's home to Camembert cheese and some of the world's finest butter, despondent over free-falling milk and beef prices that have pushed them to the brink of bankruptcy. Now, to those tempted to say, there they go again, the French erecting barricades at the slightest whiff of discomfort, make no mistake, these are not pampered strikers. For starters, dairy farmers don't strike. Someone has to milk the cows. And while it's true there is a specifically French context to this crisis, the drop in world prices is real. So what's the answer from politicians? On day three of the protests, the French government announcing an emergency plan of action. We'll look at the measures uh, that have been taken by France and by the European Union that devotes, let's not forget, 38% of its budget to farm subsidies. What do they see as the root of the problem? Too much milk and beef on the market? Supermarkets and wholesalers who squeeze out the little guy? Or do Western consumers pay too little for what's in their plate? As French cattle and dairy farmers erect barricades, we're going to be looking at a food chain that seems to have gone haywire. Today in the France 24 debate, uh, we're looking at uh, the issue of, a f of uh, farmers going to the barricades. And with us, Rudy Rutenberg. He's the EU agricultural reporter for the Bloomberg News Agency. Thanks for being with us. I want to thank as well for joining us from Brussels, Geneviève Savigny of the Confédération Paysanne Farmers Union, the... Uh, uh, I guess it's, uh, the translation is the, the Peasants' Confederation. Uh, Geneviève, t tell us about your farm. Well, my farm is not a dairy farm, and I'm here on behalf of uh, dairy farmers, not only in France, but also in Europe, because this, this crisis is striking all over Europe. And this is very important to remind that. All right, and we will be uh, talking about also joining us a man who knows all about Brussels uh, from his days at the European Commission, Eric Martin, founder uh, of uh, the, uh, this, uh, the consultancy Agro Strategy and Perspectives. Perspectives. Uh, and uh, joining us as well uh, from uh, the uh, uh, Normandy region uh, that's been the heart of those strikes, yeah. uh, uh, the, the heart of those protests, I should say, uh, Nathalie Goudet, French senator. Many thanks okay. for joining us again here in the France Vendette okay. debate. The France Fight Get Debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, our hashtag F24Debate. Now, among the measures announced uh, by the French government this Wednesday, a 600 million euro soft loan program. It will throw farmers a lifeline. Uh, some saying it's not enough, that they may man the barricades again on Thursday. Uh, for many, it's only a stopgap measure either way. And French herders still feel like an endangered species. Nicholas Rushworth has more. With tension high, the government has rolled out a 600 million euro emergency package for farmers. The rescue plan includes money to help with their costs. The fund to ease the burden of employment payments will be increased to 50 million euros and there will be banking guarantees to beef up financial support for farmers up to 500 million euros of bank credit. The 24 measures in all focus on helping farmers tackle low retail prices and with debt restructuring, employment costs will be eased and rescheduled. There will be help building contracts with the retail sector, efforts to boost exports with a French quality produce label and efforts to improve competitiveness. Farmers are in resolute mood. They blockaded the A1 motorway north of Paris overnight Tuesday to Wednesday, as well as other key roads nationwide. They say farmers face up to 1 billion euros of debt and accuse food processing companies and supermarkets of not respecting a deal signed last month in which they agreed to pay more to farmers. They are also being hit by a number of other factors. French people are eating less meat. There is fierce competition from other EU countries and there's a Russian embargo on EU food imports as well as slowing Chinese demand for French produce. Those pressures added up make farming in France tough financially with an estimated 1 in 10 French farmers near bankruptcy. Uh, let's begin with you, Geneviève Savigny. What do you think of the measures announced by the government? Is your trade union going to be calling on uh, farmers to protest again on Thursday? 
Well, we have to, to, to keep on, um, on being, being active and, and striking and doing, doing actions also to, to denounce what is the real situation. But Go ahead. All right, we seem to have lost the connection there with, uh, with Brussels. Uh, as soon as we have it reestablished, uh, we, we, we we'll put it back again. Uh, some of the tr some some farmers are lifting their strike action. Uh, others are saying they're going to keep on going. Uh, Nathalie Goulet, tell us uh, what you think of what the government's announced this Wednesday. Well, it's a lot of money, but first of all, you know, this agriculture is our uh, green gold. And uh, for the time being, it's totally jeopardized. And all the connections, the dairy, the meat, the pork, uh, everything is hurt at the same time. And, and more than that, the, the current pricing structure is very unbalanced. And that is the basis of all the problem. <laughs> That, that's the, 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 the price, that's why it's unbalanced. Sorry, go ahead, uh, Nathalie Goulet. Yeah, and, and uh, so uh, last month yeah. there was an agreement with uh, uh, distributor and retailer, and, and, they, and they don't apply this agreement. So the people are very angry, you know, they are, they are working 40 hours, and even more weeks, they cannot let their cattle. And it's very hard, and, and the, they, they, they cannot leave from their work. And that is the main issue. We, we have to restructure um, uh, the, the, price, uh, the price structure, because they always sell under the price at the cost. You cannot live like that. They, they are losing money every month, every day. All right, uh, Eric Martin, that has been one of the issues that has been brought forth as to why this protest has come to a head. There was an agreement when there was the liberalization of milk prices uh, that, uh, what, it was with the distributors that they would s slowly raise the price, and the farmers are saying that uh, the wholesalers and, and the distributors are not keeping their end of the bargain. Eric Martin? Yeah, uh, the situation is not very clear and very complicated in, in French about the farmers and the producers. Yes. Exactly. In June, we, we, we sign, uh, they sign an agreement. So uh, nobody would like to, to respect this agreement. Everybody says it's just a political agreement, in my, in my view. And uh, it's not the real, uh, the real goal of the, the, to, to, to add, to assist your, your, our farmers. In my view, uh, the problem is since many, 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 uh, many months. Last year, for example, everybody knows we stopped the quota in, in Europe. And what we do in Stop French, the quotas of milk, yeah, the quota uh, on uh, milk in French. And what can we do about that? We we we, we just to stay. Well, June arrive, May arrive, and we don't do anything. I think the crisis. Everybody, the government and the farmers and the producers knows the crisis arrive. And when they sign the, the agreement, they don't have an approach strategic approach with the future for that. And just nobody wants to, 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 to pay exactly the, the price of the, the, the milk, of the beef, and so and so, because the market was established before the end of the quota. All right, Rudy Rittenberg, explain, explain it for, for our viewers here. Tell us about these milk quotas that were lifted, and, uh, and were the French ready for it? Well, this was a decision that was taken many, many years ago, and the uh, European Commission has stuck by its guns. Yeah. And, uh, and April 1, uh, as, as had been announced for at least five years, the quota disappeared, despite uh, some grumbling in the meantime, because uh, people didn't, uh, some people didn't want to stick to these quotas. So uh, some countries uh, <laughs> may be prepared for these, uh, these quotas better than others. I, I know that in Ireland, for example, the Farm Board uh, they had a clock ticking down uh, to the end of the quotas because they were looking forward to the opportunity to produce more. Mm -hmm. And what, yeah, should the, what should the French have done? The French uh, should have thought what it was going to mean, that they would become part of a liberalized market. Uh, that it, and we are talking about a market that is very global, that is, mm. uh, that is determined by prices in New Zealand, by prices in and by sales to China, by sales to Russia, and obviously there's a problem there, um, by what happens uh, from Eastern Germany uh, in Europe to, to Spain to the United States. All, mm. This is one big market, 
and you cannot uh, insulate yourself and think that because you have uh, the largest production uh, in Europe or one of the largest, or that you are one of the largest agricultural powers in Europe, that this will pass you by. It unfortunately for uh, many farmers in, in Europe did not. Geneviève Savigny, do you agree that the French basically were caught sleeping, that they didn't prepare for this lifting of quotas? Well, I think they shouldn't have prepared, get prepared, but oppose the end of quota, because the problem is the same all over Europe with the end of quota and the end of policies to protect and to organize markets. Now you're fa we are facing a big overproduction, and the problem is absolutely the same all over Europe. It's a huge crisis, and it has been organized by agro-industry and by politicians who have really organized the end of quota for a so-called uh, to be competitive on the world market. But we are forgetting that the world market only represents 7% of the milk produced in Europe. All the rest is, 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 is used by consumers. And instead of organizing the production and making a policy for internal market and for good products for consumers, we've all, all the producers have been, they've been cheated, they've been told to go for the international market, but it's, as we see now, it's a, it's a crisis and it was so predictable that it, it, uh, it's, it's, awful. it's awful and it's going to be awful, but um, that's how it is. All right, no week we've uh, heard. And all... Preparation was not. Go ahead, Jindian. No, this is, this is really uh, what really makes our organization, not only Confederation Paysanne, but also the Via Campesina at European level, we ma it makes us very angry because we've seen all the discussion about the end of quota. And no one really wanted, no, no government, no farmers' organization, no mainstream farmers' organization really wanted to push for quotas and better quotas, better organization of quotas that are the only solution. The public, uh, public intervention is the only solution to have a fair market. Because with, with milk, milk is a product that you cannot really store. Uh, for fresh milk, of course, but if you and, and and so now we are facing a, a, a crisis that will really throw a lot of farmers out of business in the coming coming months. Eric Martin, do you agree that uh, those quotas should not have been lifted? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with uh, Mrs. Uh, Savigny. Savigny. Uh, so, but uh, for me, there is strange in French. We don't uh, prepare the future when the reform arrives. Uh, um, uh, I work in the European Commission for uh, many years, uh, in DG Agri and DG uh, Olaf, and uh, we know exactly the, the strategy of the European Commission for 10 years, 20 years uh, for the future. In French, uh, we know exactly the information, <coughs> we know we can prove and have another approach for the market, for the production, for the segmentation of the market, and so. And we don't do anything. So, uh, in my view, uh, the crisis today is the, not the fault of the government, not the fault of the farmer, not the fault of the quota. It's a global um, fault of everybody because we don't assist uh, more the agriculture, the farmers, the production, and the consumers to explain what happens in our market. All right, and this has brought it, the whole crisis to a head, but it's something that's been brewing a long time. All week we've heard the stories of dairy and cattle farmers. The solution found by one in Brittany, well, to switch to growing organic peas. Hmm. He has no regrets over the eight days, eight days of vacation he took over 20 years. He now earns as much from one acre as he did from 10 acres of cows. We need to set ourselves apart and focus on quality. Stop overproduction, and we either do that or tomorrow we face ruin. And if we have too much debt, we'll do what some of our colleagues have done and tie a rope around our necks. Uh, that's very real, by the way, Rudy Rittenberg. Uh, what I, I read there was a study done 500 suicides in three years in the farming sector. Yeah. 50% more than in other sectors. It's roughly the equivalent of nearly one suicide every two days of a French farmer. Yeah, and uh, suicides especially high in livestock, which uh, 
which uh, you saw this farmer who switched to, uh, to, uh, to plant production. The thing with uh, animal farming is that you need to be there for your animals. Uh, if you are milking cows, you need to be milking at 3 in the morning. You may be milking uh, uh, in the afternoon and again at night if you're milking three times or twice. Um, so this is something that is really tough. Uh, it means that you uh, you are dedicated to your uh, to you are married to your job, and particularly tough, Nathalie Goulet, in your home constituency, which is home to uh, so many dairy farms. Well, I'm, I'm the senator of Camembert. <laughs> the city of Camembert is in my constituency, but more seriously, uh, uh, you know, what, what is so difficult to understand is that um, those people are working so hard uh, and they don't get the money and they don't get the salary out of their work. But more than, you have to face also the mondialization of agriculture, which was not the case 10 years ago. And uh, the impact of the Russian embargo and also the Chinese milk and this open market uh, create a big, big mess. And that, um, last year, two years ago, we voted a, a, a law on contractualization for the milk producer. Um, Bruno Le Maire tried to reduce th this gap and organize a market, but it, I'm, I'm not sure it's very successful, but they try something, we try something. All right, and as we see the Chinese economy begin to cool, that's now having an impact here. Here, here in France. We're going to pick up on those points uh, when we come back and get back to the broader one brought up by Eric Martin, which is uh, wherein uh, can those reforms start? Stay with us. We're going to look at the food chain when we come back in the France 24 debate.